The last defense of every Facebook addict is, but it helps me keep in contact with people who are far away. Well, email and Skype do that too, and they have the added advantage of not forcing you to interface with the mind of Mark Zuckerberg. But well, you know, we all know, if we really wanted to write to these faraway people or see them, we would. What we actually want to do is the bare minimum. <laughs> Just like any 19-year-old college boy would rather be doing something else or, or nothing. At my screening, when a character in the film mentioned the early blog platform, Live Journal, still popular in Russia, the audience laughed. I can't imagine life without files, but I can just about imagine a time when Facebook will seem as comically obsolete as Live Journal. In this sense, a social network is not a cruel portrait of any particular real world person called Mark Zuckerberg. It is a cruel portrait of us, 500 million sentient people entrapped in the recent careless thoughts of a Harvard sophomore. Well, that's the thing which blows my mind, 500 million people. I think that's what the Lanier book is so interesting about. It's just the scale of the thing. Any other revolution that took place with so many people in so little time would have a uh, a philosophy, a, t a period of thought, a period of discussion, an argument. But the internet revolution has happened like that. So quickly. And most of us have just fallen into it without and, and serious have become consideration. And uh, become addicts. I mean, in truly. In the past two years, no one in this room can deny it, walking down streets in New York, every day, three Everybody's, or four people walk into no, me. No, I mean, it's everybody... Like, if you were no. from a different planet, you would say it looked like a zombie race, like this. Everybody is davening. I mean, it really feels that way. Um, and so that just needs to be thought about. It's not that it needs to end, but it needs to be thought about. But what is lost? Because I'm, I am curious about this. I am curious, and I want to push you in that direction because I'd like you to think what I'm thinking, which is that... <laughs> um, <clears throat> and then we'll get to changing my mind. But, 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 but the poor, uh, what strikes me, I went to see the film yesterday, and it's a, as you say in, in your fine review, it is a very well-made film mm. with extremely good... I mean, the acting, I would say, is perfect, mm. and the way it is cast is perfect. And the, but the subject matter, the paucity of... The, the paucity of, well, think... of, of experience... But, but I see, I think the subject's quite interesting. I, I think it's interesting about uh, people who perhaps have a positive experience. But, you know, with all the, these things, the problem is that you can't go backwards. Like, you, you can write as many articles about the internet revolution as you like. You can't turn the thing backwards, and that truly is a conservative position. There's no putting the cat back in the bag. That's not going to happen. But it might be that we can think a bit more carefully about where we're going next. And to me... If you ask what's lost, it, it's just a very simple thing. It's, it's something about being relational rather than performative. The weird thing about Facebook is that everybody on it is like their own mini celebrity. That's what it turns you into. You have fans, you're, you're constantly giving them updates, you're like a little celebrity. And the relation, no matter what anyone says, is pretty much one way. And then you are voyeuristic about other people's celebrity profiles and how many friends they have. And it's an idea of being human, which is one way. And real life is relational. You have to deal with other people. You have to have some kind of relationship with them. And you can't just you have perform to look at yourself. Them. You have to look, them, look at them. You have to look them in the eye, which has become increasingly difficult for younger people. Quite often I have a cousin who looks like this all the time. <laughs> but on the internet, you know, it's all so it, self-revelation. So it creates a sense, uh, uh, a feeling or a sense of intimacy without the necessity for it. That, I, I think that's true, but I also think, and I wanted to try and say in the piece, that you don't need to have a kind of, oh God, where are we going to reaction, because young people will always find their way out of these things. They're not, no generation is more foolish than the one that came before. They'll always find creative ways to work themselves out of this situation. And you can already see it happening. There are already artists on the net, all kinds of radicals on the net. They'll find some way. And in fact, the more culpable, and I don't know if I made this clear in the piece, are not the kids who went on Facebook, but all the adults. It was the adults who didn't even it behoove them to sit back and think for a minute and question, what is this platform, what is it doing? But they felt like 
you know, girls fainting in a puddle over this stuff. They really, they all went on Twitter, they all went on Facebook. The, it was the adults who really fell for it. Um, what the kids do will be more interesting. We'll see.